No, it's Hostmaster. It's Madam Hostmaster. Honored guests. I ask you, what were you doing back in 1959? I was mostly making a lot of noise, crying, weeping, but my friend Cyril was jumping out of airplanes. In service to our great nation, he made more than 200 jumps into places that I don't want to go. And 50 years after that, his niece said, we're going to have our revenge. 200 jumps will give you a service-connected disability that the Veterans Administration will fix. His doctor said, we can give you shiny new knees, but you also need to have hydrotherapy with that. Hydrotherapy is when you walk around in a pool, the water is holding up your weight so that your knees gradually heal carefully and correctly. And there's only one problem with this. The pool is broke. The chemicals in the pool degrade the lining. And at this hospital, there is no money to repair it. So not just Cyril, but dozens or hundreds of other patients who had served our nation were not getting the care that they had earned. Now often they learned in service to suck the pain. Cyril, however, has always been an advocate. Growing up in Jim Crow South, he had to advocate for his construction business. He had to use his voice when he was a cop to advocate for law and order. And when he moved to Seattle, he put himself out there to advocate for Seattle Super Smoke, his line of premium smoked meats, which he put into the finest hotels and restaurants in the area. In the process, making contacts throughout the business community and raising funds in advocacy for charities such as South Seattle College and various cancer care organizations. So Cyril knew how to advocate. He got his network together. They formed veterans and friends of Puget Sound, some other veterans, and business people who got on the phone, got on the printer, importuned with great conviction, all 45 members of the Senatorial and House Representatives group five state area serve at his hospital, plus state, county, and city officials as well. They worked at it and worked at it, and the result was an appropriation for a pool. Not just one pool, but two. You notice in the back, there's warmer water for the paraplegics whose metabolism are a little lower. When this appropriation came through, everyone celebrated and was so happy, except for Sarah. He said, hold on there, folks. It's going to take two years to build this thing. Two years. No hydrotherapy. We must have money to rent pool space and local pools, plus a van to take the patients there. Okay, okay, okay. We hear your voice. We will do it. Think how many hundreds or more of people have been served by this simple active advocacy. You might ask, aren't there existing organizations to do this already? There must be dozens. No, there are hundreds of veterans advocacy organizations and patient organizations and so forth. But, like the pool, they've got their lanes. And if a problem falls in their lane, well, they'll take care of it. But so many problems like this pool in nobody's lane. So they swim by because they're busy. Well, Veterans and Friends specializes in taking those problems that are outside everyone else's lane and then going looking for a solution. For example, we kept hearing patients at the hospital who drove up from the south, Tacoma, Olympia, wherever, saying, man, I missed my exit. On I-5, there's no sign of the hospital. We, we took downtown Seattle, got lost in the one-way streets, and missed our appointment. Very serious deal. So we said, well, isn't it someone's job to call the Washington State Department of Transportation and do signings? Yeah, it was our job because no one else did. And Washington DOT said, of course we'll put up signs. Why didn't someone tell us? It was that easy. Now, I can't show any patients because of privacy. But inside this hospital one day, one of the clerks came up to me. The clerks they are allowed to hand you forms, and they'll take the forms and enter it into the computer. But they're not allowed under law to advocate for you beyond a certain point. And this man, William Booker, a Tuskegee Airman,
find the wheelchair, no longer verbal, but still strong in his gestures. His wife had brought him to the hospital five times with paperwork trying to get in for a non-service connected disability assistance, all sorts of care. And five times they were rejected. And we knew, the clerk knew, this isn't right. Something's not right. So we looked at the paperwork, and right on the front, under income, well, they had a, a nice pension from Boeing due to a successful career, and that put them over the means test for non-service connected disabilities. But we read on. We read on the second page, halfway down in the fine print, item seven, subtract medical expenses. Well, do you have medical expenses? The assisted living facility is $3,000 a month. Do the math. We got them in, and the last year of his life was spent with the great care and assistance that he had earned and just needed a little bit of advocacy to get. It's not that hard. He's got a little book card there. Beautiful little book card. 5,000 outpatients come through every day. And when you drive to this hospital from OMAC or a Skykomish, a long distance, you want to get several appointments in so that you don't have to do it several times, which means there's hours you're sitting around in the lobby with nothing to do. But this little book cart, not enough for 5,000 people. We have the budget, but half price books in Tukwila and Pegasus Book Exchange over at the junction said, well, we've got carloads of gold books at Kohl's. If you can just get some minions to come in here and carry them. So we organized our minions. We packed the hospital with so many books. The administration had to respond by putting up shelves. <laughs> How wonderful. But our biggest recent project started off when we were talking to the acting director of the hospital about that hospital is more acting directors than Hollywood. <laughs> we're talking about getting bigger televisions for the, the long-term living facilities. And to distract us, he pointed at the area between the ER and the main building is just the cement cigarette butts. And he says, you know, that's not very relaxing for people to sit and look at. Wouldn't a few potted plants be nice? Everybody knows gardens are therapeutic. You sit and look at a plant, it's relaxing, it's de-stressing. Uh, but Congress does not fund the VA to put in beautiful plants. We wrote a memorandum of understanding. The VA contributed space. Our private donors contributed up to $100,000. The University of Washington School of Landscape Architecture contributed their program on building healing gardens. For six months, they had a bunch of graduate students come in, and it was a wonderful task talking to the patients to find what they wanted, the staff, and then building the whole thing in the middle of a hospital. The result? So relaxing. The sound of water, leaves, shade, a place to sit with your family or your friends and just talk, or a pack. Go off by yourself and relax. It truly is a healing garden. There are many such projects which any of us can work on. And you really need just three things to work with veterans and friends of Puget Sound. Number one, you need to have an interest in the subject. You don't have to make this a full-time job or even a part-time job, but you have to be interested in veterans affairs and patients. Number two, what I call clean hands. You're not going to make money off this. Our donors are so generous because they know the money and the goods go to the project. Number three, you have to be a little bit of an entrepreneur or a little pushy. You have to enjoy using your voice to advocate. And if that means talking to a patient, if that means picking up a box, if that means talking to a CEO or a senator, okay, you'll get rewarded. Now, this is not about getting your name on a plaque, although you might keep your name on a plaque. <laughs> <laughs> this is about pride. You get pride in the job you're doing, and you also make great friends. You meet wonderful people who do all sorts of things. Could you do this? Could you be a voice and advocate? Talk to us after the meeting.